This actually happened on December 31st, and I completely missed it. There was a freaking interview with Robert Kirkman himself talking about The Walking Dead, a animated adaptation. My offer still stands. I said in one of the... Actually, I think I said this on stream. If a animated Walking Dead series comes out, I will do a overanalyzing series just like I'm doing with Attack on Titan. I will spend like 30, 40 minutes talking about every single episode. I will cover all of it, and I've already done it. I've done it many times on the channel, so this is not a bluff. I'm going to spend four years making a single series on the channel. If this happens, this is a promise. Clip it and ship it, it's happening. That said, with the Kirkman himself, uh, I saw a little bit about this, but I haven't read through the whole thing. So let's let's read through this and see, because if you want my prediction, I think this isn't, um, this is good that he's interested, but I don't think this is like a, you know, it's coming out. I, I don't, I don't, unfortunately. They are talking about AMC, which to me seems like AMC owns more of the rights than I anticipated originally. Because I thought uh, that they had two different like um, rights deals figured out. Uh, one for the comic book and one for the one for the TV show. So The Walking Dead spans comic books, video games, blah blah. We know all of this. The network is hungry for an animated adaptation. Creator Robert Kirkman adapted his super uh, superhero comic Invincible as an adult animated series on Amazon's Prime Video. By the way, you know what I find really really funny? A lot of these projects are now becoming like so complex and big that that we are now moving into uh, animation. Like um, George R. R. Martin was talking about how there are like three different animated uh, Game of Thrones shows in the works because they would just be too expensive. And I just learned this today. There's a freaking Lord of the Rings animated movie coming this year. I love this. I love anime. I love animation. And frankly, I think it gives you so much more room than live action shows a lot of the time. That's not to say that live action shows, you know, are worse across the board. Absolutely not. But in terms of like recasting things, like Rick would have never left the show if this was an uh, animated show. Like Andrew Lincoln, if he were to voice a animated Rick Grimes, of course some people would be mad, but I think he would just be recast and we move on. And that is the beautiful thing, uh, thing about animation. You can cover up so many real life issues with animation. It's great. All ages comic book, Super Dinosaur, I don't know what that is. Uh, now that both the Walking Dead comic and flagship television show are uh, in the grave, that's a, that's a brutal way to say it, uh, Kirkman ended his long-running zombie saga, we know all of this, uh, and season 11, we know all of this. Uh, addressed a potential Walking Dead animated series that more faithfully adapts the comic book. Now, my big issue with this is um, what I said about all the Walking Dead spin-offs. I will continue watching all of them, but my fear is that like the stuff I don't like in season 10, 11, 9 is the same stuff that will be in these spin-offs because it's still made by the same people, right? So, if they really, really stick to the comic book, then that's a moot point. But if it's kind of like the, uh, the show originally was with like, let's do a few changes here and there. Well, I don't want to use the slippery slope argument because it's kind of dumb. But um, it, it is a slippery slope with these changes. Like, Sophia's death. Sophia's death rippled throughout the enti uh, entire show. And by the end, it was like unrecognizable. And you know, ditto for a lot of these things. Uh, you need a vision. You need a very, very long-term vision with these stories. I think it would do a, uh, would be a lot of fun to do a faithful animated adaptation, but I don't know AMC's appetite for such things. Kirkman wrote in response to a fan's letter in the pages of the colorized reprints. These are really, really good, by the way. If you have the opportunity, read this. So these are just colorized reprints of the original series, and they're beautiful. Uh, I really, really think that like um, Walking Dead as a series does have a charm in that it's black and white, but goddamn reading these things colored is so good. And by the way, this is not Kirkman suddenly changing his mind or anything. Kirkman has been talking about an anime ever since The Walking Dead started. If you go back to like, I want to say issue 30 something maybe? Kirkman was talking about a Walking Dead anime before AMC picked up The Walking Dead. So before it became a live action production, he was talking about, hey, let's do an anime. Kirkman's an OG when it comes to animation. I think he always wanted to do an animated series which would be very, very cool. Uh, as for the live action side of AMCs, uh, yeah, we know there's a bunch of stuff. Uh, but Kirkman is, of course, knee deep in the future Invincible and thus too busy to be involved with the writing of Network's Walking Dead spinoffs. Kirkman hasn't scripted an episode since season five. By the way, I don't know where people get this from. Kirkman hasn't worked on the show for a very long time and he sued AMC for profits. Uh, I think the case has now been dismissed, 
However, I'm pretty sure that there was a off the books, um, well, not off the books, but you know, like a deal between them. So basically a settlement. However, that worked out, I don't know. But Kirkman and AMC, I don't think they're on very good terms. I will say that. I think he left The Walking Dead for a reason. Uh, I generally, I, I honestly think he's just a bit tired of uh, of The Walking Dead as is. So I'm really, really happy that like Invincible is popping off right now. Uh, we've talked about this before, but I feel like a lot of authors, especially like George R. R. Martin. Imagine being George R. R. Martin and whatever you do online, people just bombard you with when's Winds of Winter coming out. It's got to be exhausting. You you have to start, you know, hating your own thing a little bit. Uh, I think that's Kirkman with, with The Walking Dead a little bit. Uh, not putting words in his mouth, but I wouldn't be surprised if that's what it is. Because he, he worked on it for such a long time. Uh, and even with Invincible, a lot of the time people are like, well, where's Walking Dead, you know? But, you know, Invincible is really good. So that's great. Uh, I'm very happy with uh, where the show ended up. I think showrunner Angel Kang did a great job on the final seasons, Kirkman wrote in the letters column. I think every show has a wave of expectation that builds and builds up to its conclusion, and it's very hard to navigate that wave as you reach the end, but Angela handled things very well. Uh, the parts of the show that were always most exciting to me are the parts that didn't follow the comic closely. Obviously, a lot of this could be PR speak. We don't know how, how much he actually thinks this, uh, because, you know, I mean, he, he hasn't scripted an episode since season 5. A lot of that is probably legal stuff, uh, but a lot of that is probably also just his interest waning, I guess, in the IP and uh, the things they're doing there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's very hard to navigate that wave until you reach the end. I think that also speaks to, to the final comic issues, you know? Like, the Carl line, I think, is super fourth wall breaking. The, uh, I just can't do this anymore, right? Like, after Rick's death. Uh, I feel like that is, that, that was basically Kirkman speaking to us, and the next issue is, is the end. We just jump right into the end. Uh, I've said this many times before, I think in terms of endings, The Walking Dead ended basically exactly how, how we all expected. It's just that, that you know, the middle between, between the final act and the ending was not there. That's the problem. Uh, the ending, though, I was perfectly, perfectly fine with. That said, like I said, I wasn't expecting anything big. Uh, I think a lot of the stuff Kirkman says here, I think it'd be fun, but I don't know AMC's appetite for such things. Well, let's be clear, AMC's appetite is to make money with The Walking Dead IP. Let's be clear on that. That said, doing an entire new adaptation of the comic book for something like AMC, I don't know if The Walking Dead IP is currently doing that good. Because something like One Piece, there was a lot of talk about the One Piece remake, right? Like One Piece hasn't even ended. That's the problem. You know, people are saying, wait, hold on, you're remaking One Piece, but One Piece, the original anime, is still ongoing, and we don't even know when it's gonna end, and you're already remaking it. The thing with One Piece, is that, compared to The Walking Dead, I think currently, its value is insane. The Walking Dead, unfortunately, uh, if you go onto any, any, like, Ask Reddit, whatever type of thread, one of these threads, basically, right? The Walking Dead is always that show people used to watch, people, uh, people think fell off, people stopped watching after Glenn's death, when Negan came in. All of these reasons. So I think, like, the IP has, has been hurt a lot since then. And in the general, general public, I don't think Walking Dead has had its, like, House of the Dragon moment, you know? Because Game of Thrones, everyone was done with Game of Thrones, including me! I was never going to return to Game of Thrones except for the books. Never. And then House of the Dragon came out. And they got me back in. The Walking Dead hasn't yet had that moment. Now, there is a little series with the title of The Ones Who Live coming out with a man by the name of Rick Grimes. So, if you want to drum up hype and potentially revive the IP, well, wouldn't that be a great little, uh, great little time to do that, right? So, coming off of something like that, if we wrap up the, the Ones Who Live story, which presumably, well, it's probably not going to be one season, let's be honest, but if it is one season, we wrap up Rick's story properly. And, well, surprise, The Walking Dead Redux the original story as told by Robert Kirkman in a brand new animated form. Because I think even the Western market, with shows like Invincible, uh, and even like Marvel's What If, uh, right? I think people are opening up to the animated format a lot more. Because even now, people say like, whoa, animated stuff. And I'm like, come on, wh what are you talking about? Go watch Monster. Go watch, like, Invincible. Go watch Attack on Titan. Go watch all these shows and try and tell me that animation is not like... He's not, like, really, really good for this sort of storytelling. Uh, the, the one I keep coming back to is Monster. Monster is literally a live-action show that is disguised as anime. Because I feel like for a lot of people, it's the stigma that's the problem. Uh, but that is changing. 
once Rick's story is done, uh, the TV version story is done, we start to see something like this. Because let's be honest, if Rick is actually written out of the story, you know, big surprise, the reason why Rick was airlifted out and the reason why Rick is coming back now is because AMC was very, very scared of losing Andrew Lincoln. Because originally when Andrew Lincoln left the show, there were talks of him leaving indefinitely. Then there were talks of movies, and then it became a show. Like, for all of this time, AMC was just keeping their fingers crossed that Andrew Lincoln would want to work again. And he did, eventually, you know. So, once his story is done, and they've lost Andrew Lincoln for good, Maybe he's gonna voice Rick Grimes in in the animated show. That would be much easier, right? He could do it. Uh, he could do it in Britain, and uh, you know, I, I think it'd be far easier for him as well. But anyway, once they lose him and once they lose Rick's core story, uh, well, you know, wouldn't this be a good move? Rick is back again for an all inst uh, for a new installment of The Walking Dead. And one thing that is also I think important to note is, like for me, making The Walking Dead retrospective, it's kind of easy to assume that everyone who's watching my videos, knows of the comic story. But even on my videos, there are like 50% comic book. So many people have never read a single issue of the book. And I think if you took like the Walking Dead mainstream audience and compared it to, to the number of people who've read the book, it's basically none, <laughs> you know? So I think this is a really, really good, good, good idea, basically. I would love this. Was the comic ending announced or did it just happen? It was not announced. Uh, Kirkman made fake issue covers. There were issue covers for uh, 194 and 195. Those issues obviously never happened. Kirkman bamboozled us right up until the very, very end. I'd rather have the Clem uh, Clementine adapted than the two comic book uh, over again. Um, I don't know, because I feel like I don't really think so. I think with, with the Clementine story, like the video game style already lends it far more to a because I don't know, like, it's the same thing with comic books, right? To me, video games are just like a natural medium that everyone knows of. But are comic books even more niche than video games? I think they are. So, I don't know. Because, like, the comic book is 100% limited on a page, and it's, like, captured in time, right? The video game, it is already motion, it is already cinematic, it is already basically everything that an animated series would be. So... If you were to argue about, like, what is more redundant, if you will, that's like the thing people always say, why, do, why are you remaking these series? I, I would argue that a video game adaptation would be more redundant than a comic book adaptation, you know? Like I said, if this happens, I would be very, very excited. I would be all over this. And the fact that Robert Kirkman is still talking about these things, it gives me hope. It gives me hope in my poor little heart. It gives me hope that one day, Maybe. Maybe this will actually happen. I wouldn't put any money on it, because, you know, I mean, he's doing Invincible, he's doing just fine. Uh, and it seems like Invincible is going to go on for, for quite a bit. And I'm pretty sure Amazon confirmed a bunch of seasons for them as well, so... I think he'd rather focus on that, but... It makes sense for AMC. I, I think if we're following the money, it makes sense for AMC to do this. The Governor arc is what uh, I would be most excited for if they made this uh, an animated series. Same. Same. The thing is, the thing that always surprises me is if you look into the HBO, like, um, quick lore recap. If you don't know, The Walking Dead was originally, uh, pitched to HBO. They dropped it. HBO didn't get The Walking Dead. Now, can you think back to all those times where people were going to war about whether or not Game of Thrones is better or The Walking Dead was better? Imagine if HBO owned both of them. Those were the two biggest series at the time, because Breaking Bad had ended. Breaking Bad was over. The Walking Dead and freaking Game of Thrones, those were the big boys on the block. If HBO owned both of them, oh my god. But anyway, um, the argument HBO used is that The Walking Dead is too violent. In hindsight, knowing what happens on Game of Thrones and knowing what happened on AMC, it's kind of mind-boggling, right? Because compared to Game of Thrones, the Walking Dead comic isn't even that bad. Like, yeah, the governor stuff is very messed up. But are we just forgetting about stuff like Reek in Game of Thrones? Like, obviously, no spoilers, but if you know, you know. You know. HBO did, did tune down a few things from the books as well, to be fair. But still, the argument in hindsight seems kind of mind-boggling. What I'm getting at, though, 
is that these perceptions of what goes and what doesn't go in this series, I feel like has softened a little bit. I think Negan and the outcry about the level of brutality that we saw there was one of those very silly moments. I've, I've, I've talked about it in the retrospective as well. I think the outcry about Negan's, uh, Negan's kill was silly, and most of it was from people who had never watched the show. Because compared to, like, Noah's death, the Negan stuff, it was brutal, sure, and the way Glenn went out is obviously, like, mega dark, even compared to Noah, right? Because that was, like, very personal. Noah was just torn apart, we'd seen that many times. Uh, but I think it was silly. So, I think, like, violence as a whole wouldn't really be, be that big of an uh, issue, especially in animated form. Um, but, you know. The only real issues I see is, is like, yeah, the, the governor stuff. But if it's really that bad, we could do just some implied horror, you know, like like Kirkman always did. Um, just make it brutal, but don't show any of it. Just, like, do sounds and stuff, if, if violence really is the problem with that arc. Uh, but I'd be down. Because obviously, the governor arc, if we're going with the AMC business model, uh, it was it was already toned down. Again, going back to the violence angle and the censorship angle, even AMC themselves have softened on this. Uh, you know, like, they're dropping F-bombs in the later seasons, and it's fine. It's totally fine. I think they still only get, like, one or two, which is mind-boggling to me, by the way. The fact that, like, the censorship laws in the US state that you can swear once, but if you swear twice, well, that's bad. But you can swear once. It's, you know, the second time that it gets bad. <laughs> to me, that is very silly, but even those things for AMC do seem like less of an issue. So I think just standards around these things have softened a little bit. I can see this happening. The only thing that I would be very interested in is what style they go for. Like, do they go for the black and white, like the original comic? Or do they go for a colored style? I think my knee-jerk reaction is obviously it would be colored, right? Because why wouldn't it be? I mean, it's an animated show. Why the hell would it be in black and white? But I don't know. I don't know. There are a lot of stylized series now. I think even black and white would look pretty cool. Um, I think I would prefer colored, though. I think I would. Colored for sure. I think most people would prefer colored, yeah. Because if we're talking about niches, I think a black and white series is once again a niche of a niche, you know? I think for a lot of people, just seeing something in black and white is immediate, like, no. I don't want that. Uh, it's the same thing for, again, like comic books and everything like that. It's just the format that people don't like. It's unfortunate, but it is what it is. Because I know, like, even even with stuff like Better Call Saul, uh, people said, like, the black and white stuff, they don't like it. Even though that was used, like, very sparingly. You know? Chris Pratt as Rick Grimes. Um, I think, like, for voices, people would have a lot of opinions. Uh, I think that would probably be the hardest thing. Because I won't lie, I've said this in the retrospective as well. When I read Rick in the comic book, I see Andrew Lincoln. Like, in my mind's eye, even the events that have never happened in the uh, never happened in the show, I still read Rick as if it were Andrew Lincoln. Because I think, like, Andrew Lincoln just, just has such a wide range of acting that, like, even the stuff he has never done, I'm like, yes, this could be Andrew Lincoln. So, you know, I feel like Negan is one of those characters that is actually detached in my brain, like, 100%. Like, the comic Negan and the TV Negan are completely two different entities. Whereas Rick, in both versions, even though he is massively different, he's the same person to me. Uh, but casting voices would be very decisive, yes. Can you imagine uh, the comic version of Here's Negan animated and expanded? Because don't forget, a animated series in this form would still probably expand on some of the things. And I don't mean expand in the same way that we saw in the show. I mean expand in terms of the comic is frozen in time. It's just these small bits of events. The com uh, a animated show would have to tie all of those together, right? So an added dialogue here and there, there wouldn't be these abrupt cuts. A lot of these things would just tie together much, much nicer. So like Negan's story in the comic, right? Like here's Negan. God damn, that would go so hard. Uh, I guess the important question, if someone is wa watching a video version of this, actually no. That, that that would make that would be that would be too complicated. I was I was gonna ask how would you structure seasons for an animated show? Because I think an animated show would flow much much differently than the than the TV version. It, it's very confusing now saying like the TV version and series. Th this would be another thing. It's like you would have to separate w what is an animated series and what is the regular series where you use the word series. Uh, I was gonna ask about seasons, but like one question would be, especially if you read the book. I think if you read the book, your decision might might vary. Would you want it to be black and white, or would you want it to be colored? That's like number one. 
And number two, would you be fine if the entire cast was completely different? And I mean entire cast. All of them. Every single one. Andrew Lincoln never involved in any way. Not even a cameo, nothing. And also, number three, would you be fine with this being on AMC? We all know AMC. And I guess number four, would you want it to be a a sort of a weekly thing like we saw with the like we saw with the uh, original series or would you want it to be like the Netflix model? I don't like the Netflix model. I'd want it to be weekly, but this is a series that technically everyone already knows. So maybe here too, decision, uh, not the decisions, opinions may vary. You know, do let me know. Do let me know. Weekly sucks. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Why? 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 Hold on. Okay, let's debate this. Let's debate this. I don't like weekly. Uh, no, I do like weekly. Not because I'm a content creator who who makes content. No, that is not why. Because I don't. I don't make content on weekly things. Frankly, even if I even if I did, making stuff weekly is too hard. So no, this is not because of that. I like weekly stuff because it gives you the opportunity to actually talk about things, to stew on things, to theorize about things, and community engagement is just higher across the board. Everyone is on the same page. We've all watched the same episode. We are all on the same page. Everything's good. You talk to your friends. You talk to people online. Everything's great. With a binge model, most people either watch all of it at once or watch it like, you know, episode by episode. And then it's like, hey, what episode have you seen? What episode are you on? Can I talk about spoilers? Oh, well, Bob here has seen all 10 episodes. I've also seen all 10 episodes, but freaking Jimmy over there has only seen three. So we can't even talk about it now. Well, that's a problem. You know, even though the shame came, uh, show came out yesterday, that's a problem. Uh, in terms of community engagement, you don't get 10 weeks of engagement. You get one most of the time. And when people binge a show, I think people just, um, they don't really take a lot of it in. I couldn't tell you, like, Stranger Things is the one that comes to mind immediately, right? I couldn't even tell you where a Stranger Things story really begins and where it ends. Because in my mind, it is all just blurred together. It's just Stranger Things. <laughs> it starts and it ends and I don't know what happens in the middle. I don't like it. I like to binge it on my days off. Yeah, I just, I, I don't like binging at all anymore. I'm going to be honest. Unless it's like a, the only shows that I like binging are shows that I'm like, not really watching, you know? Shows that I really like to actively enjoy, actively talk about, actively discuss, actively critique. Those I want to watch on a weekly basis. Because I think, like, again, it's that, it's that community feedback that really changes the way you think about certain events. It's why I love One Piece so much. Talking about the chapters every single week. And the chapters are like these small bite-sized bits of story that, that you can really take in all of it every single week. It's so much fun. It's so much fun. Uh, you binged One Piece? I binged One Piece up until Wano. And then I started reading it. Yes. Uh, so I've been on both sides. Good point. I've been on both sides because when I binged one piece uh, I was in a bit of a frenzy, you know, I was I was getting all of it at once But now that I got caught up, it's so good. Uh, I like weekly, but I hate it when I have to avoid the source material That's that's true. Yeah uh, With things like Game of Thrones, for example Well, not with the later seasons, I guess but even even the early seasons like avoiding uh, avoiding the source material was was a big deal Yeah Because uh, like People talk about how One Piece is long. Bro, telling a friend to go watch The Walking Dead now with the number of episodes it has? I'm not sure. I I'm not sure. Because a lot of them are extended. And it has like what? How many episodes does The Walking Dead have? I think it has 170-something, right? 177 episodes. And a lot of them are extended. So this is like... This is like 400, 500 anime episodes. It's mind-boggling. Uh, let's say they did an animated The Walking Dead show, what art style would be the coolest? I mean, very, very hard to say, right? Do you go with, uh, with like, Charlie's art, uh, art or something like Charlie's art? Or do you go with something completely different? Because, I mean, if it looked like something, uh, something like uh, Attack on Titan or Chainsaw Man or something like that, sign me up. Can you imagine um, a Walking Dead series with the animation fidelity of Chainsaw Man? I would not shut up about it till the day I die. It would be insane. Uh, I don't. Th I don't think Mappa would uh, would <laughs> would like that though. <laughs> so I, I honestly have no idea. Uh, there are a lot of really really good Western uh, animation studios now too, but it feels like e even the Western studios still outsource a lot of stuff to Korea and Japan even even now. So honestly, I've got no idea. Invincible's animation has been kind of rough at points though. 
yeah, like, uh, that's the thing. Japan and these Korean studios, they know what they're doing. Wh who is animating Invincible, by the way? This is not a dig at the Invincible animation, you know, they're, they're doing their own thing. But purely in terms of fidelity, uh, it's important to keep in mind, though, that, like, Invincible is not 22 minutes. Invincible is 40 plus at all times. So it is a much different beast. Invincible... Oh, Invincible Studio expands to Japan. Surprise. I think Invincible looks really, really good, right? Because I think, um, in terms of, like, animation, it's also to keep in mind, like, what kind of story is it? Because uh, I think, like, The Walking Dead... The Walking Dead would be kind of odd if it had, like, the Invincible vibe, right? If you told me to pick between a black and white series and a Walking Dead series in the style of Invincible, I think I would lean towards black and white, because in my mind it would, it would fit better, you know? I think style is also incredibly important. Uh, and I don't mean style in the sense of, you know, like, fidelity and everything. I mean, like, genuine, just style. The vibe. Invincible is a superhero story, so that's not really a problem. If you... Basically, what I'm saying is if you gave me three wishes, one of those wishes would be that... Well, I, I would combine... Uh, I would not give two wishes. I would give just one wish, but the wish would be combined. Number one, I would want the uh, map animators to finally be compensated to get enough sleep. And number three is that they would make a Walking Dead series. Uh, but all of those would be one wish, because I wouldn't give all three wishes. No way. No way. I have other things I need.